Hey, what's up, Reverse? It has been a while since we've met face-to-face -face like this, instead of just me pointing the camera at the fish tank so you know something's about to go down. As you know, things are getting more and more expensive these days with the hobby and we're just trying to stay afloat, trying to find places where I can save a little bit without sacrificing too much. And I started looking at where I save money with my consumable and I would like to share with you guys. Some of the things you know already, for example, for calc washer, I use Mississippi Lime and that is the go-to for a lot of OG reefers. Going by memory, the 50 pound, and that's a huge bag of Mississippi Lime, it goes for like 10 bucks or something ridiculous like this and it lasts me for a long time. In fact, I'm like three years in, I'm still on half a bag. I split them into two buckets. The kicker is that the shipping is 90 bucks, but together it is still roughly just a little bit more than $100 shipped and it's totally worth it. And if you just look at my tank, I've been using this cap water for years with no issue at all. Same with a lot of OG reefers out there. The second consumable product I use a lot is Soda Lime, and that is for my CO2 scrubbing media for the CO2 recirculating scrubber in order to bring up the pH level. I'm not gonna go into the details of how a CO2 scrubber or recirculating CO2 scrubber works here because I've done that in the past, but in terms of the media itself, I have been using exclusively, I'm double checking to make sure I spell it right, shopmetvets.com's version. I buy the five gallon jug that's kind of like this big, almost like a bucket of salts, and it usually lasts me about a year, year and a half. And this helps to raise my pH level. This is probably my third or fourth bucket already. Um, and once again, look back at all my video, no issue at all. And just like a lot of people say online that have used this brand, this is a much more affordable alternative to something that's made specifically for the aquarium hobby. This brings us to today's video. Uh, that is the third thing that my reef tank consumes a lot, and that is a specific trace element named fluoride. As a lot of you guys may know, I am on the Reef Moonshiner Trace Element Dosing Regiments and I have nothing but great things to say about it. It does work, the science makes sense because you are doing ICP tests to see what is missing in the tank in terms of trace elements and then you target those to a certain level. It works, but the only criticism I have is of course the price. We're looking to kind of take a break from the cost if possible. This leads me to one single element that I seem to have to dose a lot. Fluoride. For whatever reason, my reef tank drinks fluoride like there's no tomorrow. I've heard people saying that it's due to cow water dosing. I cannot confirm it, so I'm not gonna cast it in stone here, but they're, they're murmurs. All I know is that I am dumping fluoride in the tank every single time a major adjustment comes in. So that leads me to start looking into alternatives because each bottle of fluoride is $20 from Reef Moon Shiner. Uh, again, I am okay with the price of these trace element except for the quantity I have to use uh, each correction versus some of the other chemical. I may just be dosing maybe like 10 mil, 30 mil, which is fine. One bottle is 500 mil, I have no problem buying those and kind of support the cost. But when a bottle of fluoride of 500 mil is $20 and I have to dump that much in, I started looking. And this is when I pull out my little post it notes. Back in March of 2023, my reef sensei, the DIY king, the budget reefer, Jim Telegram, kind of hit me up and said that, hey, did you hear about this DIY solution for fluorides? And he actually told me the recipe to it. Now keep in mind, when Jim hit me up, this is just like a general DIY recipe for uh, fluorides. It has not been pretty much match up with the Reef Moon Shiner's fluoride solution yet. Uh, but later on, apparently somebody matched it up and guess what, two years later, when I ran out of fluoride that I bought, I started looking and that's why I came across uh, Jim's message again and also kind of the follow up from Randy on Reef to Reef. As always, I will have the Reef to Reef links in the video description below so you can read exactly what's going on, the math behind it and the science behind it and the calculation behind it to sum it up. Basically, 2.22 gram of this sodium fluoride from Loud Wolf into one liter of LDI water will match the Reef Moonshiner's fluoride solution. Let me break down the math a little bit. Right here, we got one ounce or 28 gram, and I bought four. Because even with four, the total comes to $11.39. $11.39 shipped to my house. And I'm looking at my notes right here. It makes 100.9. 500 milliliter bottles, meaning 100 of these bottles that I buy for 20 bucks per bottle. So talk about 
cost saving. Uh, now the big question on your mind as well as on my mind is whether is this really the same thing as what Reef Moonshiner is selling or for that matter, uh, how about Captivate, another company. Uh, so here's where I turn once again to Randy's threats on Reef to Reef. Uh, these are for grades, I say, I say on the label as well. And again, the, the concentration we dose in the tank is so little, I'm not too worried. Not to mention that I am also still doing ICP tests every three or four months. So uh, if there's anything weird going on, I will catch it. And I'll definitely let you guys know as well. So let me be the guinea pig. But it seems that people have been using something like this with no issue. For the cost saving, let me just remind you, for $11.39, I could make 100 bottles of the fluorides of the same concentration as the Reef Moonshine Methods. I am willing to roll that dice. So let me be the guinea pig. I need to make a huge correction since I've been out of fluoride for a while. I need to make a huge correction and then just, I'll, I'll share with you how my tank looks afterwards. So we're not leaving anybody else out. On the reef to reef frets, they also mentioned that if you want to reproduce the Captivate concentration of fluoride that they sell, it is 22 gram of this stuff. Although they do use potassium fluoride instead of sodium fluorides, Randy, Randy did mention that it does not really make a big difference. So it's just a matter of whether you want to add some sodium or you want to add some potassium into your tank. Uh, for me, sodium perfectly fine. So with that said, I am gonna wear my protective clothing go outside and make my mix of 2.2 gram of this, this is 8 gram, into 1 liter of our DI water to match the Reef Moonshiner's concentration. One more thing, no shade thrown to the Reef Moonshiner's method because it is a great program, I'm still on it. For all the other elements, I still buy directly from them as well. But just that certain things gets a little bit more expensive, maybe it's more diluted for certain reasons. And that forced me and other people to maybe look for alternative methods to kind of find a similar product. For all my other trace element needs, I am still shopping with Reef Moonshiner and I'm still using the program methods because it works. Four to six weeks later. Hey, what's up reefers? It has been about a month and a half since I've started dosing the DIY fluorides in this tank. While I have not done a ICP test yet, I want to show you what the tank looks like right now. Uh, in summary, I dosed it a little bit north of 500 milliliter, so that's one big bottle of the DIY sodium fluorides, and tank looks good. No big issue, as I not, I'm not expecting any issue simply because I know I'm just dosing sodium and fluoride into this tank. Um, and the, the fluoride comes from a, a reputable chemical company, Lao Wolf. They sell all kinds of chemicals. And online, a lot of people have done this and no issue at all, so I also do not expect any issue. And I will be doing an ICP test later on in the summer. So if you want to be cautious, please wait for me to do my ICP test first to confirm everything looks clear before you try this yourself. But if you are adventurous and ready to give this a go, uh, you see the link in the video description below, you see the instruction, go ahead and give it a go. But remember, just be careful when handling sodium chlorides uh, and just wear protective clothing and whatnot. But since we're here, let me just give you a quick tank tour and see what's up. So in the last video, you see that I tried to introduce the clownfish to the Colorado sunburst anemone, which is right here. You see that the Colorado sunburst anemone moved from that spot to underneath the arch. It liked that place. It took over that place. It absolutely expanded. I, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see how big it is now. Unfortunately, it is not in its gold face, which is my favorite. It's kind of in the rose bubble tip anemone face. So it looks like a pretty standard LBTA. Uh, but this is a Colorado sunburst anemone. Um, I am a little bit sad that the clownfish, which integrated really well into the tank, they ended up taking parts in the uh, red Ganipora instead of choosing the anemone. Uh, this red Ganipora, I believe is the OLA red, uh, needs to be fracked at some point because look at this, the new growth at the bottom, they are slightly bleached out because it's not getting as much light as the, uh, the tentacles at the top. So later in the summer as well, I'll probably address that, but for now, I'm just happy that at least the clownfish has settled in nicely. You also look up here that I have made more fracks. The corals are literally growing out of the water. I'm talking about these goldenrod that bleached uh, a couple of videos back. They have completely healed back up. 
Uh, there's one branch in particular that did not do well. Uh, it actually has some algae growth and some dead spot that Aptasia took over. Uh, so I just nipped that off and in the process, of course, I broke off more than I meant to. So I made some chunky frags. So if you are in the Maryland, Virginia and DC area and is interested in golden rods, uh, hit me up. I've also got uh, WWC slime ball. As you can see, I have a pretty decent amount. So if you're looking for this as well, hit me up. I may be fragging up some of the ACI King Hammer, that's a gold hammer, as well as the Princess, that's this guy right here. So I may have to have available soon. And right here inside this little box, I also have a couple frags of the Bahama Lama's Weeping Willow. You'll notice I have one, two dozen of frags. And this third one right there. So I kind of nipped off some of the edge and put them, oh, you can't see from the back, of course. I also put them in this little box right here. And if all goes well, it should attach in about two weeks time and I should have some frags available. And this one right here, I'm still waiting for my buddy, uh, Julian, to pick this up. So this frags has grown quite fast. Uh, it was a little e little wee little thing three months ago and now it's looking like this. It's looking like a teenager already. If you're curious, the mother colony is back there. It's probably not in the most optimal spot. That's why you see the uh, tentacles slightly stubby compared to back there. Look at the way it flows. Here, I'll give you a top-down view. I think uh, some corals look best top-down. And uh, quite a few of you guys asked about the green one. That is the one I got from Red Frog in Canada. Uh, supposedly, that is a Japanese uh, weeping willow. So I may frag that a little bit later in the summer as well. But that one is a really, really slow grower for me. So I'm not expecting to pull a lot of frags out of it. Uh, so looking through on all the corals, they are doing good. And I probably need to frag up a lot of things. For example, like this Space Invader Pectinia. This one is sold already. Um, I also need to frag up, I need to work up the courage to frag up this magic carpet. As well as this guy, I believe this is a 24K Neptos. And looking from the top, I also have other things growing in the middle. Like this guy right here. This, style, I believe is style 4 the cat paw. This guy looks amazing under white lights. So I'm hoping to get a frag of this into the mangrove tank. Oh, actually, no, scratch that. Sorry about that. Completely forgot about the plan for the mangrove tank. I am planning to turn that tank uh, brackish. So no, no, that is not gonna go into the mangrove tank. That's gonna stay here. But uh, that coral looks amazing under white light. It looks hot pink. Uh, and it looked hot pink. I tested it out when I was uh, buying the frag as well. Asked the vendor to turn the light to more white. He was using a castle, so I was able to do it. And it looks absolutely amazing under white because of hot pink. And I saw that this guy, this is the orange one, is actually a Monty. Um, Sequoia? No. Satosa. Satosa. Uh, it's being overgrown by all the corals next to it, so I may need to rescue it. And a happy surprise is that back there, that was actually one of the frags from the TSA Coral Smackdown. Apparently it survived. I forgot about it. And it's just slowly growing in the back. We'll see what it turns into. And next to it is the, um, the firecracker, I believe. I believe that is a firecracker that I got from an amazing, amazing local reefer who I'm hoping to get a uh, tank tour of. And I'm looking for, we kept trying to get a date, but it's tough because we're both are kids. So eventually we'll make it happen. But so far, like you can see, the tank did not miss a skip. In fact, I think the tank has done even better than before, probably due to all the major trace adjustment or maybe spring, I don't know, one or the other. But the point is that the DIY fluoride did not cause an issue. I dumped a bunch. Here, let me show you this. This is the one liter jug that I mixed up. And I, only, uh, I used this much, a little bit more than 500 mil, mil, like I mentioned. So if there's something wrong with it, most likely I would have noticed already. But again, uh, if you're cautious, wait for me to do a ICP test on the system first before you jump in, uh, or do a lot of research online, and uh, I'll have the reef to reef links in the video description below. Once again, huge thanks to Jim Telegram at Reef Sensei, as well as Randy, the reef chemist, on um, Reef to Reef for uh, providing alternatives for uh, some of the more budget-minded folks who are a little bit more adventurous and try to DIY some stuff. Um, you guys, resources and inspiration cannot be understated, so huge thanks. All right, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. I'll see you guys next video. Peace.